Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Ryan from Mama's Got a Budget, and thank you so much for joining me. What is the much anticipated, the elusive sharing of my screen so you guys can see what I actually do, like my budget before the budget, before I talk about my budget in my budget videos and actually start budgeting, you know what I mean? So. This is like a behind the scenes sneak peek of what I do every month. So I'm going to take a poll at the end of the video. Let me know if you like it's better this way or the way that I usually do it, which is like actually in my planner while I'm looking at the screen. Remember how I always say, well, I have my numbers on my spreadsheet in front of me. This is a spreadsheet I'm talking about. So let me know if you like it better seeing this way or me actually writing them down. But. We are in May. Today is May 5th, so happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. So if you guys are new here, my name is Ryan and I am a cash-based budgeter. So I use cash envelopes, I cash flow most of my budget, I try to stick with it and not use credit. So that is the purpose of my channel is to share my journey with you guys. So let's get started for May 2019. So as you can see, I have it all set up already. I wasn't going to take you guys through the entire setup process, but I do use a Google Sheets. And if you can see here, we're going to name this May 29-2 because I do have my numbers here already. So I just use Google Sheets because it's easier for me to do it at home on my computer, like from any computer really, and when I'm at work, if I have like a few seconds, I can just, you know, plug in some numbers or whatever. So I like the whole cloud aspect, so that's why I use Google Sheets. I haven't had any problems with it yet, um, and it is very, very similar to Excel, which I am very, very familiar with, so I like that. So I have it set up. We can just run through it really quick. The green section up here is income. And that's where I just put in all my income so what I roll over from the previous month what I made in the previous month from my online side hustles my full-time and any other income and then in the red pinky red here I have my expenses and I just list those all the way down here um, and as you can see we have apps and memberships which I keep track of over here in this gray section and then debt payments which I keep track of over here which I'll like what I think that I'll be able to make um, as far as debt payments and then special expenses I also put over here now this is a new category for me this month but I'm gonna keep track of them over here and then cash envelopes and sinking funds which I have listed down here and I do plug in formulas for these two so that it just grabs the number but I'll show you guys when I get to that point the yellow one here is um, it's kind of like a summary of the debt payments so those are them right here and then purple and then the green sinking button and then down here I have the grand total so that I can make sure that my net income let's type it in here so that I can make sure my net income is a zero that's that is our ultimate goal is to have our net income at zero so yeah that is the spreadsheet that I use and I took everything out so you guys I so you guys can see me fill it in from start to finish. Now what I did already go ahead and fill in is my debt totals over here. I just went on my apps and I grabbed my debt balances that I'm carrying over as of May 1st. So I have Capital One, my two cars from Capital One, my American Express, the dentist, which is Dr. S, Carmex, and Naviant, which is my car loan and my student loan. So I just went ahead and grabbed all those numbers and these two change down here because of compounded interest but whatever so I just grabbed those as of like I think Friday right before I left from work these were my totals so yeah guys, let's just get started let's hop over here um, from my April month end, my April was kind of weird I made like a few mistakes and I was just like I kind of felt like I was all over the place. I tried to film the video twice and I felt like I was confusing you guys more than I would be teaching you guys. So um, I, I like, couldn't find the words and I was just getting really, really frustrated with it. So I went ahead and scrapped that video. But my end results from April, my net income was actually $128.99. So I had $128.99. 
$128 more left over than I had budgeted for. So that's good, we get to roll that over into May. My previous month for online income, that came out to $16.99.61. So thank you guys so much for your support. That is from my um, Etsy and Shopify shops where I sell my cash envelopes and also affiliate links and um, YouTube where you guys are watching me now for AdSense. So that all together minus expenses, um, supplies, and taxes came out to $16.99.61. <laughs> Excuse me. Full time. Excuse me. <laughs> I get so gassy when I film videos, I feel like. So for full time, I am budgeting $28.71.64. And, oh, again, yeah, this, the purpose of this whole spreadsheet is our budgeted versus our actual. So we are only filling in this column here, which is the budgeted amount. This is what we are forecasting, what we think is going to happen in the month of May. And then at the end of May is when you come in and you fill in your actual totals and then you see your variance and how you did. So right now, my column D, which is a variance, should mirror my column B because column C doesn't have anything in it. It won't have anything in it until the end of the month um, as far as the expenses and everything else. So my other income, I'm expecting to be... 319340 and that is a combination of um, other income that I have coming in plus this month I actually finally received my tax refund so that is the total there so super excited we have some extra cash to work with with this pay with this month so it should be really really good to be able to disperse more money you know more money more money more money so why is this not why is this oh because it's not picking up okay so I added this row and it's only picking up five to seven but I need to pick up four to seven okay so that's why all right so our budgeted income for May we're expecting seven thousand eight hundred ninety three dollars and sixty four cents that's what we think is gonna happen so let us now allocate that money to where we need it in our lives so for life insurance <laughs> I still haven't gotten this figured out so bear with me that's zero but it's always there as a placeholder in case one day I actually remember what I'm doing with my life rent is going to be 400 cell phone 258 Eli savings I always come back to you know that my car insurance is pretty steady at 147.18. Absent memberships, and that's when I come over here. Now, my absent memberships this month, I went ahead and signed up for Headspace, which is the meditation app I was telling you guys about. I did try, and thank you for everyone for your recommendations. I did try a couple other ones. They were okay, but I just feel like I need more guidance. I'm very new at the meditation part. When I did it, it was back in 2016, and I didn't do it long enough to like become really good at it. It's kind of like you have to train your mind. It's like an exercise. It's a whole new skill. And so I, feel like I felt like I needed to start over with training my mind on how to do that, and I felt like Headspace worked the best. Now, I'm not saying that the others that I tried weren't good, but I felt like I was too much of a novice, like a beginner, to just hop into something and, you know, go with it and feel comfortable with it, you know? So I went ahead and I did the, the Headspace annual membership and I did have a coupon for it as well. So instead of the $100, I ended up paying $71.91. But if I was going to set it, when I set it to the side, so that's going to be $6 a month. But I signed up on May 1st, so I'm taking the, all of that out of this paycheck. Dunkin', which is in uh, my coffee app, we're going to do 20 Netflix is 13 Hulu, I cancel that, so be proud of me. I'm just going to hop on my mom's if I need to watch something. So I just want to um, put that in. Next month it'll disappear, but I want to put that in and then a note as to why I cancel that on the 3rd. Patreon is 8, Spotify is 15, that's a family plan for me and my sister. Typic 318, Visco is 167. Um, iCloud is 99 cents, Delta Sonic is 13, and Jim is 888 for a grand total of 
155.63. So I'm going to hop over here in Apps and Memberships. I'm just going to put Equals. I'm going to click right here in the cell and then hit Enter. So now whatever that cell equals, like let's say I cancel iCloud, right, for 99 cents. No, cancel. It's gonna drop down to 154 and it's automatically gonna change it over here for me too. So whatever um, happens with apps and memberships that, that kind of you know fluctuates, I'll be able to keep track of it over there and I won't have to put it in twice. Debt payments, we're gonna go ahead and make that a formula as well and then we're gonna hit equals this cell right here. So when I actually fill stuff in, it'll populate up there for me. Special expenses, I'm going to do the same thing, equals, but we're going to hop over here for it and press that. Now with the special expenses, I already went ahead and typed in everything that they are going to be. So um, I'll go over that in my next video, but it's going to be 406.71. I already know that total. But when I fill it in over here, like the total will be 406.71. And if you guys didn't know, like to get the total, you just hit equals sum, it's S-U-M, open parenthesis, you drag it to where you want it to stop and start, and then hit enter, and that is where you're gonna get your total from. So that everything's connected, everything's working together. So let's jump down to debt payments. This is what I think that I'm going to be able to make toward my debt this month. American Express, we're still going strong at zero dollar balance, so I'm gonna put zero there. Capital One Platinum is up to $224.90, so I'm gonna go ahead and pay all that off. Um, Capital One Quicksilver, let me explain. I'm going to be putting the entire $128.99 that's up here in the previous month rollover. I'm going to put all that in there. And then from my online income from the $699, I subtracted the $224, and that's where I get the $1471. So that's going to go toward the debt. And then from this paycheck, since I have a little bit extra with the tax refund, I'm going to put $500. And then with my next paycheck in um, May 15th, I think I'm going to be able to put, you know, the regular $100. So I'm adding all that together for a total of $2,203.70. So that is where I got that number from. CarMax, I think we're going to play around with this one as well. So let's make it a formula. My CarMax. I usually do 258.09, right? Per paycheck, which is times two. So I'm gonna be able to do that. And then I'm gonna add on another um, half of a payment. So technically, I'm going to make a full month's payment with one paycheck, and then I'm gonna go back to my regular payment here for a total of 774.27 this month. Dr. S my dentist and his is going to be a little different also so usually I pay him $300 a month but I'm going to do that um, with one pay period so I'm going to do 300 and then with the second paycheck I'm going to throw a little bit more at it and I'm going to do 192.45 because I have an odd amount I think I have like 29 42.45 um, and 45 cents left so I'm gonna make that so it'll be a nice even what $2,500 should be the balance by the end of the month so that I won't have these odd dollars and cents so we're gonna do 492 45 to the dentist and then for Navient we're gonna put some extra on that as well usually my Navient is only um, is 71.68 per month with this pay period, or no, I'm sorry, I'm talking about this pay period. We're not even doing the paycheck, we're doing the entire month. So I'm going to make three of those monthly payments and then plus a regular payment. That's my prediction for a total of $250.88. So now my debt payment is $39.46.20, which is the sum of all of these here. 
And then, as you can see when I press enter, it jumped up there because I put in the formula for up there. So now my debt payments here on line, um, what's this, B18 should equal the same as B32, which it does. But when, once we're done with our income, oh wait, I, I skipped Elijah. <laughs> my B. So we have here, do I have a form? No, I don't have a formula for him. Okay, so if we add together our total recurring expense that we have here and our income, right? You can scroll down here to make it a little easier so that I won't get my numbers confused. We have $5,313.72 for our debt and our income is $78.93.64. So that leaves us with a net income of $25.79.92. Now we want to take off this 92 cents because now all we have to do is fund our cash envelopes and sinking funds and you know we don't want to deal with any change when we do that. So technically we have 92 cents to give Elijah, right? Let's talk through this. We have 92 cents. To make that even. Now, I wanted to give him about at least $20 per pay period, so that would be 20 plus 20 would be the 40, so 40.92. But we're also going to give him a little extra, just like I paid a little extra on my debt. We're going to give him a little bit of extra money, so I figured an extra, yeah, an extra $70. No, 71. Two. Maybe. I'm gonna give him an extra seventy-one dollars to make his total one eleven ninety-two. So now, if we scroll down here, our income minus expenses leaves our net income at twenty-four sixty-eight even. So, going into our cash and sinking funds, we don't have a change to worry about. Okay, and then going from here, it's pretty straightforward, like what you guys see in the videos, but they're just lump sum numbers instead of um, cut in half by paycheck. So now in the purple section, I have cash envelopes. Okay, so these are the amounts I'm gonna have in my cash envelopes and my sinking fund envelopes for the entire month. Now my cash envelope section is when I go to first, but I don't take into account Dr. S because he's up here in the budgeted, uh, I'm sorry, in the debt payments. So I just know when once I switch over to my paycheck, to my actual paycheck, then he moves down into the cash envelope so I don't forget to get the cash out, if that makes sense. So for current, for child care current, you can see here I have a little note to the side to remind myself that I have 22 days in May, so they only charge me for the days that Elijah goes. They charge me $10 a day if they're 22 days, that should be about 200 well that should be $220. Now for, like I already took out for Memorial Day, that is probably the only holiday that we have, so that is where the 220 comes from. Hair and beauty, I'm budgeting 45 for the month. Um, clothing, do 100. Dining out, another 100. Groceries, 120. Gas, 105. Me time, 60. Planning and crafting and special events. Couldn't think of anything for there, so that's gonna be zero. Um, toiletries, 30. Spending, 75. And toys and entertainment, 50. To bring my total for cash envelopes for the month to $905 budgeted. Now we move down, do the same thing with the sinking funds. If we have our little check, our checkpoint over here, we have $1,563 left to allocate toward our sinking fund. So by the end, that should be zero if everything if everything works out correctly. So anniversary, these are for the month. We're gonna do 30. Back to school is a new category because um, we just got the May calendar. And it was like, last day of school, May 31st. And it was finalized. I was like, are you serious? So now, <laughs> I was like, oh, now I gotta start thinking about next year. So I added that, went ahead and added that for back to school for uniforms and school supplies, you know, things like that. 
birthdays, we're gonna do 50 for the month. Car tags and maintenance, this also changed to 140 because I'm gonna go ahead and do, actually I'll show you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and do the 120, which is the entire price of my, my car tags for the year, which will be due in November. So I want to go ahead and put all that aside so that everything else I have in the envelope will be truly for the maintenance portion. So we're gonna do 120 this time around, and then we're gonna do the regular 20 for the next pay period. So that's where I got the 140. Summer child care, we're gonna do oh, 200. Condo fund, we should be able to do 230. Eli extra, we should be able to do 70. Date night, 40. Um, furniture, um, because of the tax refund, I'm gonna do 500, and that's gonna be for the TV and dresser that I keep talking about that I still haven't purchased. <laughs> and then we're gonna do 35 probably for the second half. It's gonna give us 535. Gifts and Christmas, we'll do 40. Medical dental, we're gonna do 20. Vacation and travel, we're gonna do 100. We're gonna do 100, and then memberships is gonna be 22. So then, if we go over here and look at our Checkpoint, we have $46 left over. You guys know I like to use my rainy day savings, just like I use Elijah's um, category above, just for any odd amounts just to go in there, 46. So our sinking funds equal the 1563 that we were aiming for. Now we have our income minus expenses equals zero. So that makes it a zero base budget. So that is how I do it. And then I have this exact spreadsheet open while I'm filming my video so that when I'm going down I can go ahead and tell you guys the details kind of like I just told you um, right now so and then I put like any little notes that I have off to the side and then I have tabs open down here um, within the May tab I also have the April online which is just the previous month's online income and then I have it broke, broken out for my two paychecks what I do so these are also for the videos as well but if you guys want to see those let me know but I just want to show you guys this spreadsheet since a lot of you guys were asking about it I'm really sorry about April I just it just doesn't I don't know I just can't find the words to explain like what happened with April everything was okay like everything came out okay obviously because I had the 128 left over but it's just like when I was explaining it it just wasn't making sense to enough to put it out to someone who I'm trying to help if that makes sense you know what I mean so I just didn't want to confuse the whole situation even more but let me know down below if you guys like me showing my budget this way or do you like me showing it the old way in my planner for the next video when I show it on um, my paycheck my paycheck budget um, that will be in my planner because I already filmed that because I needed to um, utilize my cash envelopes because we went to the movies and everything but um, let me know if going forward how you want to see the videos which one you prefer so yeah guys thank you so much for watching and if you guys have any questions as well leave those down below and I will be glad to help you out and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.